Hey, what's going on everybody? Jake here with Venture Visuals and on this channel we discuss and break down really dope music video effects, tricks, tips, and techniques. Today we are going to be covering five very rare freeze frame transitions that you can create in Adobe Premiere Pro. I'm going to show you how to recreate these freeze frame transitions completely from scratch. Freeze frame transitions are super popular in any type of lifestyle edit music video, any type of really creative hype edit. For today's example, we're gonna be using a music video that was sent to me by P. Washington on Instagram. He's an artist. He hit me up with his music video footage and just asked me to add a little bit of sauce to it. So I thought this would be a great opportunity to show you guys how I can use freeze frame transitions to sauce up a music video. I've been on a little two week hiatus from YouTube. I got coronavirus and it's been kicking my butt for the past two weeks, but I'm on the back end of it now if you've been watching my videos I might sound a little bit stuffy today first week of it was really tough and it had me couched I didn't really want to do anything at all but I've been drinking smoothies every day and getting a lot of rest so I figured today I'm feeling pretty good so if you're excited make sure to hit the like button down below and let's get into the video so we got this music video that was sent over to me already cut up uh, by this artist P Washington I'm just gonna show you guys a little bit of this music video so you can get the vibe now I'm headed home like it's overloaded bases hit another home or go pro on both my locations they say I hustle like Nipsey that's more than just motivation yeah speaking cold the police always be taping this world so cold keep the heat inside your blanket my mama said we ain't from the ghetto we hood adjacent but my mom beg to differ I won't get too abrasive see crooked smiles can pull us right through your braces pop a push of pounds powder stuffed in the bases my nigga Ray had his roof off in the rain my uncle said that's lame it pulled off in the thing so right off the bat you can tell that the artist is really good lyrically they got some really clean shots one thing that really stands out to me with these clips is that they got really good b-roll so b-roll is just like these artsy shots you know where you got like the steering wheel right there the car and you know he's got a lot of close-ups so like the car right there he's got the girl right here this is all b-roll right so he's got a lot more b-roll than he has performance shots in this video which is actually really cool it gives it more of like a story type of vibe instead of just you know performance vibe I already picked out five spots on this timeline where I think some freeze frame transitions would look really clean and at this very first spot we're gonna do a little freeze frame transition between this shot of them riding in the car to this shot of the front of the car let's just take a look at this spot in the song to kind of gauge how this is gonna look and feel and start to imagine how it's gonna look now I'm headed home like it's overloaded basis hit another home. there's you know that really deep piano happening in the background having like a little freeze frame effect hit with maybe one of the piano notes would be really cool the basis of any freeze frame effect is gonna be adding a frame hold so at the very first frame of this second clip right here what we're gonna do is just hold option and drag that clip up above itself so it duplicates and then we're gonna right click on it and we're gonna hit add frame hold right here and that's basically the basis of any freeze frame effect you're gonna be using a frame hold on whatever frame that you want to freeze let's go ahead and shorten it up here you can see the duration down there on the bottom right let's go with a duration of about let's go with 12 frames here and then what we're gonna do is drag this over over the very first clip so we have this clip right and then above that is going to be this freeze frame and then it's gonna go into this next clip right here so with this freeze frame clip above the first clip what I'm gonna do is take my pen tool and I'm just gonna highlight around kind of like the front bumper part of this car so let's go and just click around this area and just get kind of like this bottom half of the car right here Boom, perfect. I like to decrease my mask feather down to zero. I just think having these sharp edges just looks better overall. So now what I'm going to do with this mask is I'm going to make a keyframe using the stopwatch icon next to mask path. This is gonna tell Premiere Pro this is how we want our mask to look at this point in time. Now what I'm gonna do is just take this keyframe, drag it to the very front. I'm gonna go one, two, three frames to the right of that. I'm gonna make another keyframe go one more frame to the right. And now with our mask selected, we can adjust our mask so it starts to reveal more of the car underneath. That's perfect right there. And then what we're gonna do is go about three more frames to the right, one, two, three, make another keyframe right there, go one more frame to the right, and we're gonna click back on our mask and reveal a little bit more of this car 
like so, just moving these points that we've created. And then this is going to lead us into our next clip. So to understand what these keyframes are doing, you'll notice as I scroll over, it reveals the car a little bit by little bit. So we're basically animating the mask. That's what we're doing here. With each keyframe, we're telling Premiere Pro to animate our mask path. So now when I play this back, this is what we're going to get. get it home like it's overloaded bases. What I'm gonna do from here is right click on this freeze frame and I'm gonna hit nest, I'm gonna hit okay. And now I'm just gonna stylize this nested sequence a little bit by adding some Lumetri color. So what I'm gonna do with my Lumetri color is under my white balance, under temperature, I'm gonna increase the temperature a little bit to make it a little bit warmer, a little bit more vintage looking. I'm gonna come down here to creative. I'm gonna increase the sharpen up to like 80%. And then what I'm gonna do is just add a little noise under my effects panel. I'm just gonna type in noise and I'm gonna find it under noise and grain. I'm gonna throw this onto my freeze frame layer as well. And then from here, I can increase the amount of noise. Let's go up to like 60%. It's just gonna make it look a little bit more vintagey. It's gonna fit the vibe a little bit more. And then if I render this out by hitting I on my keyboard, O on my keyboard to set my in and out points, come up here to sequence settings, render into out. Down to Californication. Now I'm headed home like it's overloaded bases. Hit another home or go pro on both my location. Now I'm headed home like it's overloaded bases. Hit another home or go pro on both. This next freeze frame transition is meant to hit a little bit harder. So this is good for like your beat drops. Anytime the kick drum is hitting. For this freeze frame effect, we're gonna be using a Premiere Pro preset from my preset pack blueprints. I've already created the transition, so let's check it out and then we'll create it from scratch. Ghetto we hood adjacent, but my mind beg to differ. I won't get too abrasive. See, crooked smiles can pull us right through your braces. So you'll see him walk into this uh, liquor store. He goes for the dap right there, and then we have this freeze frame transition that's just kind of the sharp, fast blur and then it goes into this scene right here. So it's the same concept. We're overlaying a freeze frame transition on the video layer above our first clip, and then we're doing a little bit of a mask, and then we're applying a preset. So let's just go ahead and create this one from scratch. So here's the first clip, and then it goes into the second clip. Nothing is happening, right? I'm just gonna duplicate this second clip by holding Option, dragging it up, right-clicking on this clip, and hitting Add Frame Hold. And then what I'm gonna do is just cut it so it's a lot shorter. I'm gonna drag it over this clip before it. Uh, let's make it about eight frames. That sounds good to me. And then we are going to mask. So now what we're gonna do is come up under opacity. We're gonna take our pen tool and you can get as detailed as you want for this and zoom in more if you want to. Get really familiar with the pen tool. It's a really great tool in Premiere Pro. And as you can see, I'm like bending the lines there to kind of get around the curvature of his face. That's gonna make our cutout look a little bit better. You can zoom in and get even more detailed. But for this, I'm not gonna spend a whole lot of time just masking around his face just for the sake of this tutorial. I'm just gonna kind of click around here. And as you can see, once we get past his face, the rest of him is pretty Pretty straightforward. It's not taking me a whole lot of time here. So boom, we'll finish that mask off right there. And then what I'm gonna do is decrease the feather down to zero. I'm gonna click off my mask and now you can see we have him masked out of the background and he's overlaid on top of that first video layer footage, right? So what I'm gonna do from here is I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna hit nest. I'm gonna hit okay. Under my effects, I can come to my preset pack blueprints, which you can download on venturevisuals.com, and I can throw on any one of these presets onto this and get a creative look. So let's take this sharp flash preset and we're gonna throw it onto this freeze frame layer. So now as I scroll over, you can see we're getting this like flashing blur effect on this freeze frame cutout. I won't get too abrasive, see, crooked smiles can pull us right through your brain. This is really cool right here. I kind of wish it started like this instead of it built up into this. So let's go ahead and just open up the keyframe editor for these. And let's just delete the first keyframes and slide these middle ones back here to the beginning. So it starts really glitchy and kind of blurred out. And then it kind of leads into the next clip. Let's check out what this is looking like. Right 
That was super clean. I really, really like this freeze frame transition right here. It seems like it fits in the edit perfectly. So let's check that out one more time. So my mind beg to differ, I won't get you abrasive. See, crooked smiles can pull us right through your braces. This next transition is going to be the combination of the freeze frame effect and a background slide combined with a little bit of masking. So this one's really, really cool. So this clip of him walking away and then this clip of him rapping outside on the mic. The first thing I'm gonna do is decide where on this first clip I want the freeze frame to start. Let's make this transition a little bit longer. Let's go with 15 frames. So one, two, three, four, five. So there's about 15 frames right there. What I'm gonna do is just cut this first clip and then I'm gonna right click on our excess of our first clip and I'm gonna add a frame hold right there so it doesn't move. So we have the first clip and then it freezes, boom and then it goes into this next clip right here. So this is where our transition is going to happen. Hold option on this clip and drag it up. And then what we're gonna do is just highlight and drag these two layers up to video layer two and video layer three. And then on video layer one, we're gonna drag our next clip out underneath those two top layers. With this top layer, this is gonna be the cutout of him and then this middle layer right here this is going to be our background layer that's going to fall out of the frame so the first thing i'm going to do is mask him out of the background so i'm actually going to hide this middle layer so i can see the mask and what i'm going to do is just click on our pen tool on this layer that we're going to use for him we're going to cut him out of the background we're going to separate him now that I've finished my mask, you can see I've got them all cut out from the background. If I turn our middle layer back on, this is gonna be our background layer. And with our middle layer selected, all you have to do is come over here to effects, type in transform, and throw a transform effect onto this middle layer right here. Keyframe our position right there in the beginning. And then we're gonna take the Y value and we're gonna move it down out of the frame. So it kind of falls away like that. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna right click on this first keyframe we made and I'm gonna hit ease out. That way it kind of falls out gradually and the motion's gonna look really, really nice. And then what I'm gonna do is turn up my shutter angle so we get that motion blur. You see how blurry that background gets as it falls away right there, boom. So now we have our background falling and he is cut out from the background so he is not falling with the background. With this layer selected, this layer of him, uh, of the cutout, what we're gonna do is actually nest this again so we don't see our opacity mask over here anymore. So I'm gonna hit nest and now when I click on it, you, you see that all of that is gone. It's a fresh slate. So what I can do now is take my transform, throw this onto this nested sequence we've just created, create a keyframe under position and then I'm going to move the position out of the frame. Boom. So let's start them right there in the middle. Let's do a little bit of an easy out, easy ease out. And now you can see he slides to the left out of the frame. And then what we can do is turn up the motion blur on this guy as well so that he gets a little bit blurry as he moves out of the frame. It looks a little bit cleaner that way. And boom. That's gonna be a really, really cool transition. So let's go ahead and render this out. I like how it hits with the piano and it's looking really, really dope so far. So let's move on to our fourth freeze frame effect. This one's gonna be really simple and really clean. And I think it's a really useful freeze frame effect for your music videos and creative edits. So check this out. I've already created it here on the timeline. We have this shot of the piano coming into focus and then this freeze frame blurs into kind of the next shot right there. So let's check out what this looks like in full speed and then we're gonna break it down from scratch. I learned more rules going to school, tighten the pop moves, when it's not out of lows, we from quiet. So it kind of hits with the open hi-hat, you can hear it like tsk. I learn more rules going to school, tighten the pop moves, when it's not out of lows, we from So we see here in our timeline without the freeze frame transition, we have this first cover of the piano sitting at the piano and then we have the second clip of him straight on playing the piano right there. What we're gonna do with the second clip is just hold option, drag it up, right click on this clip, add our frame hold, drag it over our cut, boom, over our first clip right here. So let's just listen for that open hi-hat to determine when this transition is gonna start. So it starts right about there. 
So that's about the length of our freeze frame effect. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna mask around his outline. This is gonna be a pretty quick mask right here. And remember, we're gonna turn our mask feather down to zero. I'm gonna right click on this. I'm gonna hit nest. I'm gonna hit okay. I'm gonna come over here to my effects and we're gonna type in an effect called fast blur. I'm gonna throw this onto our freeze frame layer right here. I'm gonna change the blur dimensions from horizontal and vertical to just horizontal. And then I'm gonna make a keyframe for blurriness at zero. We're gonna put that all the way at the end and then we're gonna take the blurriness way, way up. So let's go up to like, uh, let's go up to like 900. We're gonna drag that keyframe point to the very left. So it starts like this. And then as the clip moves, he de-blurs into like the outline of his shape of the next clip. So let's go ahead and render this out and check it out in full motion. I learned more rules going to school. Tighten the pop move, cause when it's snow out of lows, and we're from quiet and cold. To so right here in the music video, I decided I want to do kind of this freeze frame drawing effect that I have been seeing a lot more in today's more recent music videos. We have this clip of him walking away from the camera right here, and it's going to go into this clip of him rapping at the mic. But for the first half of this clip, I want to get this kind of freeze frame drawing effect happening. So what I'm going to do is come about halfway to where this drum hit is right here on the audio and I'm going to cut. Now with this first half of this clip selected, I'm going to go every four frames and I'm going to take a screenshot, right? So we're going to start on this frame, this very first frame, and then I'm going to take a screenshot using this little camera icon underneath my preview window. So we're going to call this one one and save it to my desktop as a PNG. And then I'm going to come back here to my timeline. I'm going to go one, two, three, four frames to the right. I'm going to take another screenshot. We're going to call this one two and so on until I get to where this effect is going to end at this next cut. So I'm just going to keep taking some screenshots every four frames and I will see you guys on the other side. All right, so I've just finished taking my screenshots. I've got about eight screenshots here. So as I scroll through them, you can see how it's gonna look in kind of a stop motion sense right there. So we're just gonna paint over these frames and give it this kind of crazy scribbly freeze frame effect. So what we're gonna do is highlight all of these pictures that we just took. We're gonna hit open with Adobe Photoshop and this is gonna open all of our images that we've just created in Premiere and it's gonna open them up in Photoshop so we can begin the painting process. So with our first layer open right here, what I'm gonna do is come down under our layers panel. I'm gonna hit this plus button to create a new layer right here. And on this new layer, I can take my paintbrush tool and you can change the brush if you would like. I like this one, this uh, pencil heart. I think I downloaded it from some random pack. What I can do now is on this layer, I can begin to paint with this brush, but as you can see, it's very black. We don't want this black color, we want a white color. So instead of having the black, I'm just gonna switch that to white right here, and we're just gonna start painting with white, boom. So we're starting to get kind of like those paint strokes all over. We can change the brush size. I really like to add in some smaller brush strokes as well. So we get a lot of these like smaller details painting his eye a little bit right there that's pretty cool you know we'll do a little bit over his shoulders come down here to this little half circle right here in the middle and let's change the hue and saturation so with our hue and saturation we can take the saturation down a little bit wash it out a little bit more let's take the hue let's change the hue a little bit this goes like something a little more purpley and that's just going to help our brush layer stand out a little bit more with this hue and saturation i can just copy it by hitting command c coming to the second one and pasting it on there same with three Four, so they all have like the same kind of hue effect going on, you know, on all all eight of them. And now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly make some layers on each of these other screen grabs. And we're just going to do some quick painting details over each of these layers. All right, so I've done some light scribbles on each of these frames. You can see here as I scroll backwards. You know, just some really light scribbles, some messy scribbles. So now what I'm going to do with each of these files, I'm just going to come up here to file. I'm going to hit export. I'm going to say quick export as PNG, and I'm just going to save it to a folder on my desktop. We can say cut out PNGs, hit OK. So I'm going to hit save. And I'm just going to do this for every single freeze frame that we're doing. So I'm just going to hit save. So once I've got them all saved, 
to a folder as PNGs. I'm just gonna hop back here into Premiere Pro. And then under Premiere Pro, under Preferences, we're gonna come down to Timeline. And then where it says Still Image Default Duration, we're gonna change this from seconds to frames, and we're gonna change it from 150 to four frames, and we're gonna hit okay. This way, when we import our images, they're all gonna be four frames exactly. So I'm just gonna navigate to whatever folder I just saved all of my images to with the scribbles. You can see right here, I got all the scribbles. I'm just gonna take all these PNGs that we just exported from Photoshop. I'm gonna drag them onto my timeline. You can see that they're all four frames. We got it in Premiere Pro, and it's gonna have this crazy animated freeze frame type of effect that kind of transitions into this final clip. So let's check out what this looks like. Wearing women perfume with the poof in their purse wouldn't pop up below you. Killing me small, so now I'm just playing possum. I think these last maybe just a hair too long. So what I can do is just right click on these, hit nest, hit okay. Let's just speed these up by hitting command R. Let's go to like 150, drag that over. Again, just timing up our clips here on the timeline. Let's check this out. You killing me small, so now I'm just playing possum. That looks dope. I think that's like the perfect speed for this effect. With the poof in their purse, wouldn't pop below you. Killing me small, so now I'm just playing possum. Of course. There's so many ways to use freeze frame transitions in creative edits, which is why I think it's one of the most important techniques to know and understand in video editing. I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video. If you guys have any questions at all, please comment down below. I respond to pretty much everybody who comments on my videos. Or if you wanna just contact me directly about anything, hit me up on Instagram at Venter Visuals. If you're looking to add a little sauce to your own video edits today, definitely check out my website, VentureVisuals.com. I have some very unique editing assets on there, including overlays, transitions, light leaks, and more, all of which you can try for free by downloading the free pack. If this sounds interesting to you, definitely check out the description down below. I'll include a link directly to the free pack where you can download it. And although I've been really sick the past two weeks, watching this community continue to grow uh, is, has just been awesome. It's kept my spirits positive, and it's just been incredible meeting so many of you uh, through this channel and this community. So I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch this video and tune in. Until next time, I'm Jake Venner. Peace out.